Hello, my wow friends. Good morning. I hope everybody survived the uh, thunder boomers last night. There was a major uh, storm that came through the area and a lot of wind, a lot of rain, some hail, and some uh, spin-ups, perhaps, of some tornadoes. Um, and I hope everybody in this, uh, in our Tulsa area, uh, survived uh, well, uh, and they had no damage. Um, I come to you this Wednesday with <clears throat> uh, some thoughts uh, that uh, actually generated out of the Psalm 100. Um, yeah, but before we do that, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Oh Lord, we uh, give you thanks for this day. It is one you have made. It is one in which we rejoice and we are glad. Oh Lord, I pray that you are with us as we <clears throat> have this time together and that you will watch over all of us as we are uh, facing still uh, this uh, uncertainty in our world, an uncertainty that uh, looks to be um, elongated. Uh, we pray, Lord, that uh, life may actually return to some semblance of normality soon. We pray that you watch over us and walk with us as we still anticipate that time. Thank you for these wonderful folks that gather for a while. I'm so grateful, so very grateful. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I wanted to share with you first uh, Psalm 100, one of the a beautiful psalm of ascent, as one uh, would uh, go up to Jerusalem and to the festival activities at the temple. Um, it is a, a, a psalm of thanks uh, in the time of worship at these festivals. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness. To all generations. Let us give thanks and praise to God for his word this day. The thought crossed my mind, or actually question, how do we give thanks in the midst of times of uncertainty? Um, we, we rely on these great words of scripture that point us to that, to be able to read that and lift it up in moments of uh, trial, in moments of difficulty, in moments of grief, tragedy. We have that source, that source that speaks to us. But the question still, how do we? Well, obviously, we rely on that source. And there's an interesting story um, that... Uh, really came into my life um, in 1998. It's a story in which I was uh, in a difficult time in ministry and at a time of, uh, of uh, watching uh, my uh, parents decline in, uh, in health, particularly my mother uh, with uh, the debilitating Alzheimer's. It was uh, during a time in which I was serving a church uh, in the area, a uh, dear church, wonderful people, and I had been invited to come to a renewal. I'd been in ministry for 16 years, and um, there was something missing. I was um, one that uh, felt a heaviness in my life. Well, I went to this renewal, and it was a renewal led by lay people. And um, 
needless to say, at the end of it, after I beat these lay people up verbally, as if I were a better Christian than a, one who knew better than anyone else, it became apparent that I was wrong. And my life was fundamentally changed by the presence of the Lord in that uh, fall, in which the Lord's presence came, became very real for me, a reality I had never known, where I knew the living Lord was truly alive. It was interesting at that uh, time when I needed the Lord most, in which in a way that I did not realize the Lord was there. And it was in the midst of that difficult time that I was able to literally sing the words of Psalm 100. There was a gentleman at this uh, uh, renewal retreat. And um, at the end, when we all had a moment to share the story of our encounter with the Lord. And as I showed, shared mine and with tears and uh, with thanksgiving, this gentleman stood up and without a word, he started to sing. He sang, it is well with my soul. Those were powerful words at that time. It was a hymn that actually I did know, but I had rejected because in my kind of dark years of ministry, that it was too evangelical, that it was too uh, uh, God-wordy. Yeah, I don't know how else to put it, that it was too much of an em emphasis upon the meanness of our relationship with the Lord. Well, it changed that day for me. It's a fascinating story behind It Is Well With My Soul. And in essence, it answers the question for me, how do you, how do you read Psalm 100 in a time of turmoil, of uncertainty, of not knowing what will occur next, in which a time we live today in many ways with the uh, pandemic ongoing? And we live with our university in a in a state of uh, of being um, uh, secure in place, safe in place, uh, where students are online right now, going through their going through their finals or beginning to uh, move into their finals. Uh, time when our graduating seniors are not able to attend commencement, and the university is working very hard to make sure that they have this opportunity of a virtual engagement to acknowledge uh, their commencement, as well as planning for a physical commencement at some point in the future for them to, to celebrate this incredible achievement. These seniors are in my heart. Uh, I know the excitement that they have, and I know the excitement I always love to share with them when we uh, had baccalaureate or the final bell in a particular commencement. Well, in many ways, this story of uh, behind the story of uh, It Is Well With My Soul goes a long ways in, uh, in, in expressing the depth of faith in the midst of difficulty. I'd like to read for you just briefly a, a story. It's, it's uh, of the story behind uh, It Is Well With My Soul. It was written by a person named Kelly Goshorn. Um, the story itself is about uh, Horatio Spofford, who uh, basically wrote uh, this uh, story, uh, was the one that penned the words. Uh, he was a successful lawyer in Chicago, invested in real estate along the shores of Lake Michigan, a place I know well from my seminary days, a beautiful area. Uh, he was prosperous. Uh, he was a devoted husband and a father. Um, he was a devout Christian. In 1870, a series of events uh, turned uh, his life inside out. 
Horatio and his wife, Anna, their only son, uh, Horatio Jr., died of scholar fever at the tender age of four. Following ill while he mourned the loss of the son, every single one of his investments were destroyed in the Great Fire in Chicago. A few years later, aware of the toll these events had taken on his wife and their four daughters, Rachel decided to take the family to England, where they would accompany their friend, the evangelist uh, D.L. Moody, on his next crusade. Shortly before they were to set sail, um, a last-minute development with his business uh, derailed the trip for him. Horatio still persuaded his wife and family to go ahead. In um, 1873, Anna and the four and the girls boarded the French ship called the Vuey de Haver. Uh, four days into their transatlantic journey, he received devastating news that the ship had collided with the Loch Air. It was an iron-hulled vessel. The ship on which his family uh, were traveling sunk in 12 minutes, taking uh, the lives of 20, 226 passengers. Worst disaster in naval history until the sinking of the HMS Titanic 40 years later. Several days uh, later, uh, when the survivors had reached Cardiff, Wales, Spofford received a brief six-word telegram from his wife. Saved alone, what shall I do? As soon as possible, Horatio boarded a trip, uh, to the ship to join his grieving wife en route to England. It is said the captain called him to the bridge and said, A careful reckoning has been made, and I believe we are now passing the very area where your wife's ship sank. According to Bertha Spofford Vester, a daughter born after the tragedy, her father wrote, It is well with my soul, while on this journey. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Horatio and Anna's faith in God never faltered. He later wrote to Anna's half-sister on Thursday last, we passed over the spot where she went down in mid-ocean, the waters three mile deep. But I do not think of our dear ones there. They are safe, dear lambs. Naturally, Anna was ultra, ultra, uh, ultra, utterly uh, devastated. She testified that in her grief and despair, she had been conscious of a soft voice speaking to her, you are saved for a purpose. She remembered something a friend had once said. It is easy to be grateful and good when you have so much, but take care that you are not a fair weather friend to God. What a powerful story. Not a fair weather friend to God. It really is that call, that call for us to stand firm and fast in the joyful noise we make to the Lord, recognizing that he is our shepherd and we are his sheep, and he continually holds us in his hands. I'd like to take a moment, if I may, to actually share that song with you. This all depends upon whether or not I can keep pitch, but it is a song that uh, means a great deal. So, for you all this day, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, 
Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the joy of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but in whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh, my soul, it is well. O oh, my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste a day when my face shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well, with my soul. And it is. And may it be with yours this day of worship on Wednesday. May the Lord bless you. Let us close in a prayer. O oh Lord, we are grateful for this time. A time that teaches us to not be fair-weathered ones of you but to be all weathered children of yours. That we never, never not trust you. And that we always, in the midst of whatever befalls us, that we are yours. And it is well with our soul. Watch over these dear friends, O oh Lord, that they may feel the peace and the grip of your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. You all be well. We'll see you next week.